It arrived on the first day of decent weather last year, and departed just as winter started doing its worst, which is just about the perfect ownership timetable for a car with a convertible top. This is not to say the fabric roof of my spring-summer autumn transport, a gleaming, full-spec Audi S5 Cabriolet in rich Navarra blue, ever did anything so low rent as to leak air or water in bad weather. In its closed condition, the S5's ragtop behaved so similarly to a coupe's fixed roof including cruising almost as quietly as a tin top on motorways, that it never came across as a weakness. My point is simply that any car whose cockpit can be open to sun and stars is never at its best in a British winter. From the first, our S5 Cabrio was a mileier. As a breed, Audi's S models have a reputation for being fast, powerful and undemanding to operate, and these characteristics were immediately shown particularly to suit a biggish, heavyish 4.7 meters long 2 plus 2 convertible. In our rag top, you tended to cruise smaller roads top down, rather than rushing them as you might do in the coupe. Many's the time I'd gather most of a long journey's miles on the motorway, then take to small roads, top down, for the final 50, enjoying the smells and the swirl of the open air. It might sound fairly slow, but it felt special and it was fun. The 349 bhp and 369 pounds foot outputs of the 3.0 liter turbo v6 make progress effortless, especially when deployed through an 8 speed paddle shift gearbox with a perfect ratio for every occasion. At any velocity or crankshaft speed, this car feels ready to go. As a result, the S5 Cabrio's unfashionably high curb weight of 1,840 kg matters very little except to combined fuel consumption, 35.3 miles per gallon, and CO2, 181 g km. That translates to real word thirst of between 22 miles per gallon and 32 miles per gallon, with around 26 miles per gallon as a running lifetime average, better than the old pre-2013 V8 figure for the S5 of 23 to 24 miles per gallon, but nothing special. Another big S5 Plus was the spec. Any S5 comes well equipped. But we added a mechanical locking rear diff, a slightly tougher S suspension pack and a pound 750 B&O audio upgrade. The 1,350 pounds we were charged for an advanced parking assistance system seemed excessive, although I definitely need the parking sensors and the crystal clear rear camera that were included. We could have effortlessly saved £2,000 in our car's total cost of £61,190 by leaving out the smoking pack, the £300 wind deflector and the £950 dynamic steering, which sets out to please drivers of all statures and abilities by smoothing the effort needed at varying speeds and cornering loads but ends up feeling very artificial. We bang on a lot about Audi quality. But in the S5's case, it is justified, in 13,800 miles over 9 months, in the hands of 7 or 8 drivers, nothing altered about this car's condition, leaving aside one cataclysmic incident I'll come to. If the driver's floor mat looked a bit threadbare, you could restore it by buffing it up a bit. The paint was lustrous and never marked. Mm -hmm. 
the leather upholstery's edges remained pristine. The engine only ever seemed to get sweeter. Towards the end of our time with the car, I hit a deer while driving on a rural road in Gloucestershire, thankfully only at about 40 miles per hour. The animal was killed instantly and thrown off the road, and the car's frontal plastics were comprehensively rearranged, although the airbags didn't go off and the poor old deceased quadruped didn't come over the top and land in my wife's lap, as for a fleeting instant I thought it might have done. It was a traumatic experience that put the S5 out of action for a month while a frontal repair and repaint costing several thousands of pounds was carried out. When the car came back, looking pristine, we had no more than a few weeks to reflect on what the S5 had done for us. One thing, we hardly ever used the rear seats, which are very short on legroom for a 4.7 meters car. That made me wonder whether, for the determined Audi Cabrio buyer, an S3 might not be a better bet, what with its extra agility, lower weight and lower cost yet equal poke and quality. However, Contact with other S5 Cabriolet owners made it clear that buyers' motivations are more complex than that, many people simply liked the size and more graceful lines of the S5, others, fleet user choosers, went shopping for £50,000 convertibles, and weren't attracted by anything cheaper. In summary, this is a very good car. The S5 isn't perfect from the driving buzz point of view, but it's as fast and well-equipped and well-built as buyers can reasonably expect at the price. Those choosing a big convertible for a long life could hardly do better.